Today we shall discuss two questions on spring mass systems from the chapter conservation of momentum. The first question here says two masses m1 and m2 are connected by a spring of spring constant k and are placed on a frictionless horizontal surface. Initially the spring is stretched through a distance x0 when the system is released from rest. Find the distance moved by the two masses before they again come to rest. So, the figure that we have shown here is corresponding to the spring in its stretched state. The spring here is stretched by a distance of x0 from its original length because of which let us understand that the spring will exert forces kx0 each as the restoring force on both the blocks right because of which the blocks will start moving towards each other to decompress the spring once again right. And can we say that if both the blocks move in the process, let us say m1 moves a distance x1 and m2 moves a distance x2. Since at any point in time, the force acting on the two blocks is coming from the spring, which if we consider the two blocks and the spring as a single system will become an internal force. We can see by the nature also kx0 acting on each, the, each of the blocks. Uh, will be equal and opposite at any point in time. When the spring has any particular extension x in that case the forces will be k x each, but they will always be equal and opposite right. So, can we say that the net force on this system of the two blocks and the spring together will be 0 and hence the center of mass of this system will have no acceleration, acceleration of the center of mass is 0. Initially because the system was at rest, the two blocks and the spring in its stretched state were kept at rest. Can we say this means that the velocity of the center of mass will remain 0 because it, it was 0 initially, it has to be a constant and initially it was 0, so it will finally remain 0. Which means that in case the center of mass has to stay at rest, that means that if m1 moves the distance x1 towards right and m2 moves the distance x2 towards left, we can connect the two by the equation m1 x1 is equal to m2 x2. Why? Where is this equation coming from? This equation is coming from the fact that the shift in the position of the center of mass, if we assume that let us say somewhere here is the center of mass of this two mass system, this will not shift in the process of the two blocks moving towards each other, is not it so? And if that has to happen, uh, we have already seen in the previous videos that the corresponding condition is that the uh, the masses and the product of their displacements must add up to 0, the vector sum has to be 0 and magnitude wise then we can relate them through this equation, right. So, see that we are getting one equation here which connects x1 and x2 the displacements of the two blocks, okay. Now to get another equation because we have two variables here x1 and x2 we require one more equation. To get that equation let us understand what happens to the system in detail, how does the system move. So, do we understand that initially since the spring is stretched and the two blocks start moving towards each other under the effect of the spring force, they will come closer to each other and let us say they reach a certain position where the spring will come in its natural length. By the time the spring comes in its natural length, both m1 and m2 would have moved a certain distance, but they would have gained some velocity in the process, right? because the spring was constantly accelerating them. So, by the time they reach the mean position, by mean position we mean the position where the spring comes in its natural length and no more force now acts on the two masses m1 and m2. At that particular moment when the spring comes in its natural length, its force absolutely becomes 0 on the two blocks, right. So, that all the spring potential energy which was stored at this point in time gets converted into the kinetic energy of the two blocks. So, do we understand when the two blocks reach in this state, they will not stop here. This is not the state where the two blocks come to rest. In fact, this is this will be the state where the two blocks will be moving with the maximum possible speed. Why will they be moving at maximum possible speed here? Because after this position, the blocks as they further move in because of the momentum that they have already acquired, now the spring will start getting compressed, right? And as soon as it starts getting compressed, it will start exerting forces in the opposite direction, outward direction on the two blocks, so that the two blocks will start deaccelerating after this particular point. Now, as they deaccelerate and further slow down, do you understand they will slow down and the moment they come to rest, what will happen there? There, 
all the kinetic energy that they had gained till here will once again convert into the potential energy of the compressed spring this time right so what are we getting here is we are getting the fact that the potential energy that the spring initially had kx not squared with which the system starts all of that gets converted into the kinetic energy of the two blocks half m1 v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared in the state when the spring comes in its natural length but then that energy once again gets converted into the potential energy of the spring uh, let us call the compression of the spring as let's say x uh, dash then half k x dash squared will be the final potential energy of the spring when the two blocks once again come to rest together this also needs to be understood that the two blocks will come at rest at the same point in time why because we know that the velocity of center of mass cannot change it has to remain zero initially it was zero it will always remain zero so that means that if one block comes at rest the, the other one has to come at rest at the same time so that the center of mass always remain at rest right now once we get this equation do we understand by comparing the first term with the last term we readily get the value of x not being equal to x dash what does that imply that implies that the initial extension of the spring x not is nothing but equal to the final compression in the spring right so initially the spring is stretched by x not finally when the two blocks come to rest it will be compressed by the same value x not now what does that tell us about the distances x1 and x2 that the two blocks travel from the starting position to the final position can we say if, if m1 moves x1 to the left and m2 moves x2 to the right then the total sum of x1 and x2 x1 plus x2 should certainly be equal certainly be equal to twice of x0 one x not when the spring from a stretched state comes to comes to its natural length and another x not when the spring from its natural length gets compressed to a distance x not again so can we say these are the two equations then one and two that will help us get the values of x1 and x2 both right so once we have got these two equations now what remains is only mathematics we can maybe get the value of x2 from the first equation we can write x2 as m1 x1 by m2 from the first equation and substitute this value of x2 over here in the second equation to get the value of x1 we'll get x1 plus m1 x1 by m2 is equal to twice of x0 and solve this for x1 see that x1 can be taken common from both the terms and we'll be left with 1 plus m1 by m2 which after taking lcm will become x1 into m2 plus m1 by m2 and this is equal to twice of x0 so can we just take uh, the the whole term on the other side and write x1 is equal to twice of x0 into m2 over m1 plus m2 right so this is the value of x1 the displacement of the first block and on the same lines now using the method of symmetry do we see for x1 here we have got m2 in the numerator so uh, for x2 we expect the answer to be 2 times x0 into m1 by m1 plus m2 you can verify this by substituting this value of x1 back into the equation number 2 or 1 it is your choice now or maybe over here we can substitute the value of x1 in this equation to get the value of x2 and you'll see that this is what we'll get as the value for x2 so x1 and x2 are the displacements of the two blocks as the system goes from a stretched state to a compressed state under no external force only the spring force is acting which will be an internal force considering the spring and the two blocks as a single system okay now let's take one more question here we have the next question which says two blocks of masses m1 and m2 are connected by a spring constant spring of spring constant k as shown in the figure the block of mass m2 is given a sharp impulse so that it acquires a velocity v0 towards right find out the velocity of the center of mass and the maximum elongation that the spring will suffer okay what do we mean by impulse impulse means a 
sudden change in momentum. So suddenly someone strikes this block M2 so that it acquires a velocity V0. So suddenly it gains a momentum of MV0. When this change in momentum of M2 happens suddenly, understand that M1 will not get time to bring about any change in its momentum at that particular point in time. It will take some time for M2 to gain a velocity under the effect of the spring force that will come into picture as M1 starts moving towards right and then it will stretch the spring, then the spring will exert forces and it will pull M1 towards right, isn't it so? So can we say initially when the system just started off at t is equal to 0, if M, M2 was given a velocity V0 at t is equal to 0, can we say that the state of the system is that M1 is still at rest, so the velocity of M1 is 0, whereas the velocity of M2 is V0 and we are simply supposed to find out the velocity of center of mass. Can we directly use the definition? We know by definition this velocity of center of mass is m1 v1 plus m2 v2 by m1 plus m2. Just substitute the values. We know that m1 is at rest, so the first term will be 0 plus m2 is moving with v0 divided by m1 plus m2. So this is our answer. m2 v0 by m1 plus m2 is the velocity of center of mass. Now, how do we find out the maximum elongation that the spring will suffer? For this, uh, I hope you all remember if you have seen the previous videos that maximum elongation or maximum compressions happen in springs when the two blocks move with the common velocity which in this case will be the velocity of center of mass. Do you all remember how things will happen here? When initially the block M2 starts moving towards right, it will start stretching the spring so that the spring starts exerting um, inward forces on both the blocks. Inward force means a force that is acting on in the rightward direction on M1 which will start accelerating M1 and a force that acts on M2 towards left which will start deaccelerating M2 and the spring will continue to expand till M2 and M1 both are moving with a common velocity because till that point comes till then M2 will be moving faster than M1 and the spring in the process will continue to stretch. The only at the moment when M1 and M2 both come at the common at one common velocity will the spring stop stretching further and that will be the point where the spring has maximum extension. So we understand that the max for maximum elongation of the spring for maximum elongation we can say that the velocity of the two blocks V1 will be equal to V2 and which will be nothing but the velocity of the center of mass. We can check this by law of conservation of momentum also that if we consider both the blocks to be moving with one common velocity V, it will come out to be the velocity of center of mass. How do we get this? We get this value of V from the law of conservation of momentum. Do you all understand we can use the conservation of momentum here because there is no external force acting on the system horizontally as the system moves. So by conservation of momentum, the initial momentum of the system which was M2 V0, initially only M2 was moving with the velocity V0 and finally if we say that both M1 and M2 move with a common velocity V, see that we are getting the value of V as M2 V0 by M1 plus M2 which is nothing but this same velocity as the velocity of center of mass, right? Now what do we do next? How do we find out the maximum elongation of the spring? For that we use the concept of or the law of conservation of energy saying that since the only force doing work here in this process is the spring force and the spring force is a conservative force, it does not dissipate any energy and there is no other force here doing work. Gravity is not doing work there and normal reaction is also not doing any work because all the motion is taking place along the horizontal whereas gravity and normal reaction both the forces act along the vertical. No loss of energy anywhere and no other works done so we can just uh, write the equation for conservation of energy. Initially this system had only kinetic energy with M2 so half M2 into V0 squared and this will become equal to the kinetic energy of the system of two blocks when they are moving with a common velocity which will be half m1 plus m2 into v squared right this v that we have just now calculated plus it is at that it is at this instant that the spring will have maximum elongation so the potential energy of the spring in that case will be half kx0 squared let us call x0 to be the maximum elongation in the spring then half kx0 squared will be the potential energy of the spring. So this is the equation that we get after using the law of conservation of energy and now we can easily use this result here 
in this equation solve it and get the value of x naught ok. So, let us just substitute the values we see that the factor of half cancels out everywhere and then we can write m 2 into v naught squared. We can take this term on the left hand side so that it becomes minus m 1 plus m 2 into v squared the value of v we can substitute from here m 2 v naught by m 1 plus m 2 whole squared. So, this squared by this squared this one term will cancel out with this term in the numerator and this should be equal to the right hand side term is k into x naught squared. Solve this to see that how m 2 v naught squared can be taken common m 2 v naught squared when we take common outside we will be left with 1 minus m 2 by m 1 plus m 2 which we can simplify by taking LCM which will then give us take see that when we take a, uh, LCM over here instead of 1 we will have m 1 plus m 2 and this m 2 will cancel out with m 2. So, we will be just left with m 1 m 2 here we have an m 1 and here we have an m 2. So, we will get m 1 m 2 into v naught squared by m 1 plus m 2 and then there is this k which we can take on the left hand side 1 by k this is also there this is x naught squared. So, if we have to find out x naught this whole thing has to be put into a square root out of which then you can take this v naught outside because it is in a square. So, the final answer understand will be v naught into square root of m 1 m 2 by k times m 1 plus m 2 this will be the final answer.